Before we begin, just a reminder, I recently quit my job and I am in a bit of financial need. So if you can help, Pick of the Week requests are obviously open. They're $50 a piece and you can send them right now to my Venmo or Cash App at HulkyD. H-U-L-K-I-E-D. You can select any kid show that you want, although I would prefer if you would stick at least a little close to Fox Kids. You can also support me on my Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash Productions. I'm trying to increase my Patreon output and do some more fun things for my patrons. So if you want to get on the ground floor, tiers start at just $3 a month. Head on over to patreon.com slash Productions. X-Men is one of, if not the, most important shows in the history of the Fox Kids Network. It's the one that arguably solidified its reputation as a home for superhero action. It was the show that made the network number one, where it stayed for years. And it was the first realization of the potential that Marvel had in other media, something that is well realized in 2024. And, incredibly, it's come back as X-Men 97, streaming on Disney+. Plus. Sure, 90s Fox Kids favorites have been returning lately, like the recent Animaniacs and Tiny Toon Adventures reboots, but those have been explicitly positioned as reboots, new shows with substantial differences from the original. Despite the new title and a much more permissive TV-14 rating compared to the Y7 it got on Fox Kids, this is a full-on continuation. It's actually season 6 of the original 1992 show. It's 1997. Charles Xavier is gone, believed dead after an assassination attempt. The X-Men are continuing his mission, fighting against those who want to hurt mutant kind, and attempting to create a world where humans and mutants peacefully coexist. This mission only gets more complicated with the reemergence of Magneto, who now controls the mansion, school, and the X-Men, as per Xavier's last will and testament. A lot happens in the two episodes released onto Disney Plus as of this recording. By the end of episode two, one of the team's heaviest hitters is out of commission, and another prominent member may not be who they seem to be. This show is as dense and continuity-packed as the original five seasons were. In fact, the closest analog I can think of seems to be the very tightly plotted season one. In fact, this show's titles and end credits are styled after season ones. There seems to be a concerted effort to recall past glories. The art style is not too far removed from the original. Larry Houston, Eric, and Julia Leewald all return as consulting producers. Ron Wasserman's unforgettable theme music is back in a reorchestrated form by the Newton Brothers, and even the opening titles have been lovingly recreated and actually expanded upon to include new roster members. A very nice touch. That mindset of bring back the past extends to the voice cast. Most of the heavy hitters return. Cal Dodd as Wolverine, Lenore Zahn as Rogue, Allison Seeley Smith as Storm, and George Buza as Beast. The returning cast sounds great, even though there is some age on the performances. Look, it's been over a quarter century. They're going to sound older. These actors slip into their old roles very effortlessly. There have been some cast changes a few for, unfortunately, unavoidable reasons. Norm Spencer, the original Cyclops, passed away in 2020. His boots are admirably filled by Ray Chase. Matthew Watterson, likewise, steps in for David Hemblin as Magneto. Some cast members from the original have returned in new roles. The most notable examples are Catherine Disher and Alison Court 
who moved from their original roles of Jean Grey and Jubilee to Val Cooper and Absissa. Jubilee's recasting is significant because it enables them to rectify a mistake. Jubilee is Asian. Allison Court is white. For the new show, they finally cast an Asian actress as Jubilee, Holly Chow, which is a marked improvement. One might assume that this old blood leads to a musty product, and I'm happy to report that it's far from the case. While this is, effectively, season 6 of a long-running show, you can pick this one up cold, without any prior knowledge of the show. Speaking personally, I am only a season into my rewatch of the original show for Fox Kids Club, and I was able to pick up on the plot threads pretty quick. The animation provided by Studio Mir is also a significant cut above the original show. A lot of that is understandable. Marvel is owned by Disney now, and they have significantly deeper coffers than Ronald Perelman and the famously cheap Haim Saban. But it still looks great. A scene in the first episode really highlights this newfound energy, with Cyclops, who is so good and so cool in these two episodes, using his optical blast in genuinely inventive ways. The visual style pays homage to the 1992 aesthetic, but it has considerably more energy and verve. More importantly, while X-Men 97 does lean into its legacy actors and retro aesthetic, it feels like a show made specifically for our current fraught political and cultural landscape. I felt incredibly moved by these first two episodes, particularly the brilliant episode two, which brings the series themes into sharp focus. Speaking personally as a trans person, so much of episode two reflects what me and my friends go through on a daily basis, to a degree that's frankly frightening. How many of us have faced off against someone who dismisses our desire for equality as whining. How many of us have choked back our rage at a non-marginalized person as we observe the damage they've done to our brothers and sisters in the community? How many of us have simply been denied access to urgently needed medical care simply because of sheer bigotry? These scenes hit harder and cut deeper than anything from an optic blast or an adamantium claw. In a fraught election year, X-Men 97 feels like a series specifically made for this moment. So what if it is, to use a word abused by bigots, woke? This type of messaging has not only been in the comics for years, it was in the original animated series. I've seen what these monsters can do. Don't be fooled by bleeding heart mutant appeasers. We are at war. The human race must take measures to survive. We must ratify the mutant containment bill. If you find the messaging to have changed, gotten worse, gotten more quote unquote offensive, that's not the text. That's you becoming more reactionary. Two episodes in, and X-Men 97 is a worthy continuation of a rightfully beloved animated series. Hey, LeBron James likes it. We have eight more episodes to see if it sticks the landing. But I am counting down the hours until the next episode hits Disney+. Plus. This has all the rankings of a mutant masterpiece and I cannot wait to see where it goes from here.